Hello bitches, welcome back to my channel. Today is another draw with me video and it is gonna be indeed Halloween themed. So, so far we've gotten a few good number of pages done in this sketchbook. I did my Asian American childhood, my first page in the sketchbook, my cats as humans, female friendships, and my toxic mindset with art. And today we're gonna do something Halloween themed while talking about how to find your style as an artist because either you are an artist who asked other artists you looked up to this question or you are an artist who has been asked this question by other aspiring artists. Also, for any of you watching this, have you seen The Haunting of Hill House or have you recently watched The Haunting of Bly Manor? Because if so, I'd love to know what you thought about it without spoiling because that's a show my sister and boyfriend have been binging lately and I ended up in just a lot of emotional distress. I cried until my eyes were just so swollen that they couldn't open anymore. I was just a ball of emotions after watching and finishing that series. I did not expect my Halloween to turn this way because, you know, Halloween you're just like, yeah, we're gonna have fun and get spooked. Meanwhile, I'm just here watching scary shit and just crying my heart away. So let me know what your thoughts are if you have watched the Haunting series and Try to not spoil because I love people who haven't watched it to check it out if they haven't. So I would definitely say that one of the reoccurring themes of The Haunting of Hill House and Bly Manor is self-identity. Who are you? What, what are you? And I think that's something that also bleeds into the question of what is my art style? How do I find my art style? How do I establish an art style? And you're probably wondering, Michelle, why the hell are you trying to parallel an artist's struggles to some horror series? Well, I don't know. This is a Halloween themed video, so I'm just gonna make whatever excuse I can to just make this somewhat spooky. So I would say finding your art style is definitely going to be one of your biggest hurdles throughout life. It is something I struggled with ever since I was a kid because every time I was introduced a new style, I just wanted to draw like that artist. Like forget the previous artist that I looked up to. All of a sudden I'm intrigued by this new artist and the cycle continues. But then there are times that I look back at the old artist I used to like and I, I just want to revert back to those ways. But I'm just like, I feel like I'm being pulled in so many different directions and I can't stick to one that I just always feel inconsistent with my style and I'm pretty sure that's the way many young artists feel as well. So one of the exercises I always did as a high schooler transitioning to college student is to always have one character design that I am going to draw in about five to six different ways. And for this video today, I'm just gonna draw, I don't know, a gothic looking girl holding a pumpkin because I can't get any more basic with these Halloween themed drawings. So I'm just gonna take this girl and I'm gonna have her in a style that is very comfortable to me. I'm gonna have one where I push her shapes. I'm gonna have one where she's a little bit more realistic, one where she's a little bit more alien, creepy, very disproportionate to what would be realistic, and then one that is like Tim Burton style because this is a Halloween themed video. So I think one of the things that you should keep in mind when you are drawing and you feel like you need to push your style is to always be self-aware about how you are drawing, like what are your natural habits, because what's gonna help you break out of your natural tendencies with art is when you practice in a style that is completely the opposite of you. And I know that's so self-explanatory when you just hear it from someone else and you're just like, yeah, well, duh. But also it's easier said than done. It's easier to just think that, okay, that's the exercise I have to do. Here, let me just do three drawings in a different style. Okay, now what? It's not about that, it's about being consistent with that practice in projects beyond just your regular sketchbook drawing. So let's say if you have an idea that you want to do a comic series online or something like that, 
You might have to push yourself to find a style that is going to be more economical for you to continue producing comics. And that style might be a lot simpler than your usual realistic style. So what I'm saying is basically find projects for yourself that allow you to draw in styles that are not normally your comfort zone and will force you to find more ways to be efficient as an artist or find ways to be clearer with the types of drawings you want to do. So if comics aren't your thing, maybe illustrations are, maybe graphic design is, maybe animation is. If those are things that you would much rather do, then try to find like a theme of drawings that you could do in that specific style and you do five to ten drawings for that collection of ooh drawings that I want to do that are specifically in the style of so and so, so that you don't have that one experience of just drawing in another style. You have many attempts of practicing that style through a series of art that you just wanted to do. I feel like one thing that's important throughout this process is to also stay aware of the styles that you're choosing to practice in because some people might stay in a bubble where, okay, let's say you really love anime or you love Disney styles, but when you practice in different styles, they might still fall under the same category as Disney or anime and whatnot, but you aren't really trying styles that are totally on a whole different universe. Like, you might just be doing another subset of anime, you might be doing another subset of Disney stuff, so you're still relatively within the same family of styles, but I think that it's important to eventually try to at least practice in a style that you would normally not like because I would say when I was doing my CalArts sketchbook to get into CalArts, I definitely had to practice in styles that I normally would not like. Like, I admit that some of the drawings I did were kind of just forcefully out of just trying to show someone that I could do other things. And I think that that's a good thing to show that you're versatile and you will definitely learn a lot through that versatility. But the thing is, even when you're drawing in a style you don't normally like, you're bound to learn or acquire a skill from that practice and it's going to become one of your shorthands that will eventually bleed into the way that you normally draw. But that isn't to say that you shouldn't take influences from the styles that you genuinely do like because let's again remember that drawing and art is supposed to be something that's enjoyable for you. You shouldn't force yourself to always be doing things that you don't like to get to the point where you just hate drawing and never want to do it again. So yes, remember to tend to your interests and if there are styles of artists that you like and you just want to stick to you know, referencing from them, studying from them, that's fine too. And honestly, that's probably how I pretty much grew up, just really being influenced by Japanese animation and Disney stuff together. And that's why I feel like my style is always just this merge of the Western and Asian world, which I mean, you know what? I'm an Asian American, so I feel like that kind of represents who I am anyway. One of the things I used to do as a young child is just always making comics that are specifically in the style of an artist I used to like. I used to, and still do, love Rumiko Takahashi's style from Inuyasha and Ranma, and I just always made comics in her style because I just thought it was so cute, and at the same time they were so full of personality, so I always made comics that were just purely in that style. But then when I went through another phase of another artist, I would just then go purely in the other artist's style. And I think just having that full program of just spending like a long period of time drawing in, the, in a specific style and then switching to another, some of your style from the previous style you were practicing is going to appear when you're trying the new person's style. And then when you're done with that new person's style and you're moving on to a whole new different style, all those past two styles are going to bleed into the next one. So what I'm trying to say basically is that once you acquire your shorthands from practicing in a person's style, they're going to just kind of follow you like ghosts, like in Bly Manor, <laughs> and they're going to just follow you throughout your next steps in drawing. And I feel like that's why if you 
really want to develop an accumulation of styles of artists that you like, it's good to just spend a good quality amount of time with a style that you really want to incorporate into your work. Like, don't just take one day and be like, I'm just gonna draw like this artist for just five minutes today and I'm just gonna suddenly know how to draw like them. No, you should probably spend just a good amount of time until you feel like drawing in that style just comes so naturally to you, then you can probably move on to then experiment with another style. And again, this advice is more for people who really are adamant about finding their style because I feel like it's a common question I always get asked because Honestly, when I started drawing, I didn't really think of this stuff. I just drew normally, like anytime I just liked something new, I would just draw it. But I didn't have this structural plan in my mind to be like, okay, when I'm done drawing like that person, I'm gonna then spend three months working and drawing like that person. Like that stuff was not a thing in my mind back then, but I'm just kind of trying to explain how I eventually merged different people that I like styles into mine into like a way that could be structural to others. Now when it comes to actually practicing the style itself like when you're in the middle of trying to draw like that person, I feel like the debate of copying or tracing is always very controversial so I personally think that it is okay to trace and it is okay to copy another person's drawing for as long as you credit them in the drawing or the paper that you drew them on, especially if you're going to post it online because you can definitely get in trouble if you just replicate someone's work and post it online and you don't credit them or mention anything because it could come across as theft if it's not clarified so you should be very clear that this is a study you're referencing you're just trying to draw in someone else's style and that's fine i feel like that's how we all learn growing up and i feel like later on in life people got a little bit too political about it and would say you shouldn't do that but I do think it's just one of those things where it's monkey see monkey do you learn better when you can actually put yourself in the shoes of that artist so don't be ashamed to have like a sketchbook where you're only copying like an artist's drawing or trying to replicate a style you can have a safe space for that you don't even need to share it or upload it but I think having a place where you can just freely copy someone else's work trace over it while remembering to credit them if you were to ever share it or anything <laughs> Um, I think that is perfectly fine because you're trying to understand their strokes, you're trying to understand the way they shade, you're trying to understand how they place their proportions, but it wouldn't really make sense to you until you actually lay down those lines yourself because honestly for me, I can't learn just from looking at something and then hope that I can draw like it. I can't learn from just staring at something for a long period of time. I actually have to put the thoughts into action. So if I notice an artist tends to draw her eyes really far apart, I don't really understand how far apart she draws her eyes until I draw it myself. And then when you draw it yourself, you will feel it out like, oh, damn, it feels like her eyes are really small and they're place on like opposite eye sides of her face or something so you'll notice these things and the nuances of the artist you're trying to replicate more when you're actually referencing them or copying them but again I must emphasize to remember to provide credit when it is due so again with the drawings that I'm doing right now, the first drawing all the way on the left of the girl and her pumpkin, that's just a drawing that would come naturally to me if I just was told to draw this. That's just what I drew without aiming to go in a specific style and ultimately I feel like it's always going to be a mix of western and Japanese animation whenever I'm just told to just draw whatever in my own style. Then the second one kind of reminds me of Panty and Stocking. A lot of people have always mentioned that my style looks like them and they definitely were an influence in my life. I love how they push shapes. I love how they are not afraid to go crazy with limbs and exaggeration, which is why they played such a huge influence on my drawings and everything. So I don't think that it's a bad thing for something that you really liked to have an impact on you, especially if it helps you. But again, panty and stocking, I will have to credit the fact that they played a huge role in my style 
stylistic choices when I was developing my style as an artist, and that style is still developing to this day. And then afterwards, I kind of went for a more realistic, I don't know, it kind of reminds me of manga, like some of the shoujo manga style where they're very more detailed with the hair, they're very thin with the lines and stuff like that. I don't know, it just reminds me of manga, so I'll just say it's the manga style. So that's the style, I guess, that's the third one, and with that I'm trying to be more specific with the shading as well because she does have more detail and I feel like I naturally tend to go for more shape driven things instead of very detail oriented things because once again as an animator you go for what's efficient for you and your drawing and then afterwards I have a style that kind of reminds me of brats or aliens or just those lolita drawings where they kind of look like cute little aliens so I don't know it's kind of like a chibi too but I don't know so that's kind of what I was going for. I honestly had no idea where I was going with the style choices I was making with this. I was just like, make sure they just look different. So don't make things too complicated. Just make sure that you're always doing something to help yourself push and grow as an artist. You don't need to get too nitty gritty into the details and be like, Ugh, I'm not drawing people where the noses are 5,000 centimeters apart from each other. Or I really don't even know what I just said, but yeah. So I think one of my favorite things to see other people do is whenever they do that style challenge where you're given six prompts of like six different shows or movies and you're asked to draw your character in that style. I think that's actually one of the greatest practices that you could do but again just keep in mind that if you really want to develop this into your natural art choices or the way that your hand just lays that line down on the paper you're gonna obviously have to practice more than that one time like again keep a little collection of drawings or make a story make a comic a little project or something where you have to really just get into that world or mind of that artist where you have to spend several drawings or several weeks, days, months, however long you want to draw in that style. You want to just spend an efficient amount of time. It's like getting to know someone. You don't really feel close to someone until you spend a long enough time with them. So that's pretty much my two cents on finding your style is don't be ashamed of copying and just practice. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed watching me draw this very basic pumpkin bish in very various styles, but it was very fun to do this. I haven't done it in a while, so I highly encourage you all to experiment in the artist's you likes styles if you're struggling with finding what style is yours. So yeah, I hope you all have a really safe Halloween or find some creative way to celebrate because I know it'll be difficult this year. If you want to have a good cry, once again, I recommend The Haunting of Hill House and Bly Manor. If you just want to feel all the feels on Halloween but also still get spooked, this was not sponsored. This is just my emotions speaking. So thanks for watching and stay wholesome, bitches.